guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you another installment in the 101 series and today it is winged eyeliner. Winged eyeliner has been one of those things that is just difficult for most people. Most people don't master it right away. It usually takes a lot of practice. For me, I would spend time whenever I knew I didn't have to be anywhere and I would put it on and take it off and experiment until I found something that worked for me. I still had lots of days where my two eyes didn't match. I had lots of days where I went too heavy, too ham and couldn't back off. Uh, I didn't follow my own rule of thumb, which is to leave well enough alone and tried to make them perfect and ended up making them look absolutely crazy and that happens. So if that happens to you, don't feel bad. It happens to everybody and I still have days like that. Whenever I have both eyes that look slightly like each other and they're both looking at least a little bit uniform, I feel like it's a victory every time that happens. So I'm just going to explain to you a little bit today about how I do it. Um, my technique is a little bit more of a challenge because it's for a hooded eye. Um, I have slightly hooded eyes and one is much more hooded than the other and so I have to do a little bit of an extra step to make sure that my my wing actually shows when my eyes are open. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Like always in this series, I'm going to show you my best practices and what's worked best for me and hopefully it will help you learn how to do it better or give you an idea or a technique to try that maybe will make it work out better for you. Um, before I get started, I just want to kind of show you some of the different forms of eyeliner. Liquid eyeliner is generally what I use, um, but there's lots of options and choices and that's another thing that you're just going to have to experiment with and figure out what works best for you. Um, what I generally use, and I'll give you some examples, but right now I'm using Stila Stay All Day. And it's a liquid eyeliner, and it has a brush tip. And the brush tip is generally what I use. And the reason I like it is because it has a very pointed tip. It is very flexible. You can kind of lay it down horizontally to your lash line. You can also use the tip of it if you need to, but it's very flexible, but it's not so flexible that you don't have control. And that's why I like this type the best. There are also liquid liners like this NYC, which is a wonderful um, eyeliner, but you have to be quite good at doing winged eyeliner to use this type of brush because it is extremely flexible and will go places that you don't want it to go. And if your eye blinks or anything else whenever you're doing it, it is going to go everywhere. So I don't recommend that for beginners, but if you're kind of good at it already and you've had a lot of practice, it's very black and very matte and a very good eyeliner, but you have to be accustomed to using it for it to work out well. Excuse me while the phone rings. Um, you can use also a pencil eyeliner. For me, um, it doesn't give me a precise or thin and close enough to the lash line look for my preference, but you can do that. If you like it smudged out or if you liked it, like it blown out with eyeshadow, a pencil eyeliner will work just the same. But I don't ordinarily use it just because I can't seem to get the sharpness that I'm looking for when I want to do a winged eyeliner. I like a very sharp winged eyeliner. Um, another option is, this is like the Too Faced sketch marker. Another option is a felt tip. And this looks real similar to the brush tip, except it has very little flexibility. And the reason that that's a problem for me is because the inflexibility causes me to end up having skips. And that, that kind of happens anyway, especially in... Some, and people who have older eyelids and that there is some more movement in the eyelid than somebody who has really young and tight skin in their eye area. Um, but that's a little bit more of a challenge because it will move and it will make your eyeliner skip. And that's, if you have aging eyelids, that's something that you just kind of have to deal with. But you can combat it and you can smooth it afterwards. But with these felt tip liners, it happens almost every time and it's even more extreme. And so for the mature eye, I would definitely recommend the brush tip. Some examples are this one, um, Stila Stay All Day. There is Kat Von D Trooper, 
uh, Tattoo Trooper is a really good brush tip. Um, for drugstore options, there are all kinds, but my favorite drugstore option is Physician's for Formula Eye Booster Pen. It has a brush tip. And so basically, when you're shopping for eyeliners, look in the information. See if it's a felt tip, a brush tip. See what, if it, I, I generally will recommend one that is shaped just like this. Um, there's all kinds of kind of gimmicky eyeliners out there, like with a little ball on the tip, or it looks like a marker, or it has some, you know, inc some different kind of tip. And for me, those are very gimmicky and they don't work out for me at all. And I, and I've used, I've used lots of them. It's like I'm never satisfied, so I just keep on trying different ones, but out of everything, my favorite ones are the ones that I mentioned, the Kat Von D, the Stilus Day All Day, and the Physician's Formula Eye Booster Pen. And for beginners and for mature skin on the eyes, those are all going to be a really good choice for you. That's what I would start out with, especially for beginners. Pens are the best way to go because it gives you the most control. So that's where I start. If you guys have noticed, I do have my my foundation, my eye makeup, my eyebrows, everything's on. I, I did the tutorial for this look, choosing to have eyeliner and eyelashes and mascara, all that off camera so that I could do this for you today and then go back with a finished look for that video. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone today. Um, but the first thing that you have to make sure that you can do, you need to have a place where you can put your elbow um, on a table for stabilization. You have to have some stability with your elbow in order to have an, a very steady hand. And so that's my number one tip is definitely have your, uh, your elbow stabilized. Another thing is to have your mirror in front of you in a way where you're kind of looking down into it because it gives you more of a view of where you're putting the liner. If you're straight on or if it's above you like this, you're not gonna see where you're putting the liner. So have your mirror tilted backward where it, you're looking down into your mirror at your eye. Some people even put it down below with a compact way down here. And that's a good tip for false eyelashes too. But that's a good place to start. As far as your hand is concerned, I know like I, I like to hold my eye a little bit taut. Most people don't recommend that, obviously, because it stretches out your skin. But um, if I don't, I don't get it on there smoothly, not even in the slightest. So that's part of mine. I like to have my hand up here, but also because it gives my hand a place to land and another way to be more stable. And so there's two reasons why I have my hand there most of the time, to hold my skin very slightly taut and to have another place to stabilize my hand. If you don't want your hand there or you're not gonna do that, you can also put your pinky against your face and that also gives you some stabilization of your hand. The thing that will cause you the most problems is to have an unsteady hand, to have a shaky hand. So if you start off with all of those tips and have your elbow planted on a table or your hand or your pinky to give you some stabilizations, that's your best starting off point. So. I will show you my method. My method is very different than most that I watch, but this is what I figured out to be the best for me, and it's kind of like a little three-step thing, and I do it that way every time. So if you've seen any of my tutorials, then you've seen me do this over and over again. Um, it's difficult when you're used to doing this as second nature to slow it down to show somebody step-by-step. Step. So I may not end up with a perfect line today, but I'm going to try. It's hard to slow it down when you're used to doing it in kind of like a fluid step-by-step -step thing, but I'm gonna try. The first thing I do, and the way that you decide where your outer wing goes is to, it's kind of an extension of your lower lash line. So if you can think about it like this, some people use tape, and you can try that if you like, but I don't like it pulling all the rest of my makeup off. So I just kind of envision it as an extension of my lower lash line and it goes from there pointing up towards the tip of my eyebrow and that's how I gauge where I start my line and I always start with my line. So I got my elbow planted. I'm gonna have my hand up here for stability and so I just go right into the corner of my eye and I pull out like that. The further you pull it, 
the more dramatic your wing's going to be. I'm doing a slightly not <laughs> glammed out look today, kind of a more natural look, so I only pulled it out a very short distance there. You can go as long as you want to go. I also, some people do it a little bit more right here. I pull straight out from there because if I were to go up any further, when my eye opened, it would close into my lid, and I don't want that to happen. So that's a tip for the hooded eye ladies. You may want to look up and make sure that when your eye is open, nothing's closing up in your crease, okay? That's step number one. And the next step is to pull from the inner eye over into as far as you can pull across. I used to go all the way down into the center of my eye. I don't do that now because I have very watery eyes and it ends up getting messing up all my inner corner work, which I don't want that to happen. So I start a little bit shy of the very inner part of my eye. And I just pull all the way across. And you can see there's a little bit, it's not completely um, straight or fluid and so I have to go back and fix but I'm just getting the line I'm basically getting the outline of my line done right now now this is a choice you can start not all the way at the end of your tip and pull across and kind of have like a a skinnier pointier edge I like to just have I like to start at the very end and pull back across because that's just the way I like it to look if you want an extending out line for your wing you can do it however you like I like mine to be a little bit thicker and so I go to the very end of where I drew the line and I kind of swoop down to meet up with the other line and as you can see I swoop down because if I were to go straight across when I open my eye it would be closed up in my lid and then it wouldn't look like a wing it would look like there was this there was part of the wing missing so for hooded eye people, you kind of start here, but you have to swoop down in order to make sure that you don't close it up. At this point, I go in, my brush is probably a little bit dry because I've been talking. It is. And for Stila and, um, and Kat Von D, when you push back in, it gives a little resistance because that's actually pulling product down. You can shake it, and if you ever run out of liner, just put it back into your cap and shake it a little bit, and it will refresh itself. My phone doesn't ring ever, and then I'm filming it rings eight times in a row. But anyway, I'm just going back through here, right up next to the lash line, filling in the blank. All the place that doesn't have the black liner that's where I'm putting it in right now. And sometimes when you have extra frosty shadow, it'll kind of get mixed into the liner and it won't be so black. It'll look a little bit like your skin is showing through. You can go back over it as many times as you need to. I find that this Stila liner is a little bit waterier of a formula than the Kat Von D is a little bit more opaque but this one is more matte and the Kat Von D is, has a little bit of a shine to it and so it just depends on your preference at this point I go back to this line that was a little bit jaggedy and go back over it again this is where you can get if you're perfectionist, this is where you can get yourself in trouble by making it way too thick. And that happens because you just keep adding, trying to smooth it out, and you end up with way too much. And like I have a tiny little divot right here. I can like very, very subtly go in there with my brush from the underside. And kind of fill that in. And at this point, I would leave well enough alone. And I say that all the time because if you keep trying to perfect it, you will end up with something, an eyeliner, an eyeliner that covers your entire head. 
you, sometimes you just have to it, realize that nobody's going to be as close to your face as you are. Nobody is going to be able to see some tiny little imperfection. So remember that. Even you, like from here, you probably think I have the sharpest line ever. Well, obviously I don't because as I showed you, I had a little divot out. And if you're going to wear false eyelashes, if you're going to wear, <laughs> if you're going to wear false eyelashes, a lot of that's going to be covered anyway. So just keep those things in mind. I'm not going to talk my way through this second one. I'm going to do it in real time so that you can see how I do it without stopping and starting and explaining because I've already done that with this eye. So now just watch me do it. Watch me work, girl. Watch me work. <laughs> Watch, I will mess this all the way up at this point since I got my little attitude going. But anyway, here we go. see I made my winged liner very thick today and the reason I made it very thick today is because I know I'm going to be putting on false lashes and so in order for your wing liner to show through lashes you kind of have to <laughs> it gives you a little bit more space above the actual lash where you can see it with false lashes on so you can make it as close to your lash line as you want I always suggest that you start small and build up and I'm looking at the end of my, see this is what I'm talking about. I'm looking at the end of my, my line right now thinking, oops, there needs to be something fixed on that. Well, chances are you'll jack it up. So don't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Leave well enough alone. From far away, it looks perfectly fine and great. And once I have my lashes on, it'll look beautiful. So. Those are my best practices. One thing that you can do, there's another thing that's available, which is gel eyeliner. The reason I don't use it is because it doesn't ever stay. It transfers to the top of my lid, even if I set it with, with shadow. I just haven't had any luck with it at all. It gives you a little bit more control and you put it on with the brush. So that might be something that you can use the same technique. You would just be using like a little angled brush instead of a wand or a, an eyeliner pen. So those are my best practices. That's my advice for your best chances at having good winged eyeliner. And just keep in mind that they're not gonna be exactly symmetrical. They're not gonna be exactly the same. Just leave well enough alone and you'll do well. Practice when you don't have to go anywhere. Take it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on until you figure out a way that works best for you. Keep following in the advice of other people. Keep watching how other people do it. That's how I learned how to do it. As always, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed your time here, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And I hope you will subscribe to my channel before you leave. I will see you next time. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye, guys. I did this uh, tutorial for this look. And I am going to... The best, the the most, the thing that's going to be the the most. The thing that will be the most. What word am I even looking for? I really appreciate your time, and I keep going on and on and on and on when I need to stop. And I don't know why I have to sing everything. I really don't. <laughs>